There's few moments as iconic at the dinner table as a Palestinian makruba being served. Layers of vegetables, tender meat and seasoned rice are cooked together in a pot. Then just like its Arabic name describes, it's flipped over to reveal a stunning layered rice dish. The combination of warming flavours and wonderful textures make it a guaranteed crowd pleaser. But making this dish is about way more than just cooking a good meal. The act of flipping the pot over is symbolic of Palestinian resilience and how even in the face of disaster, something beautiful can emerge. If you're looking for a dish that is remarkable in flavour and meaning, this is the one. To start, you'll first make a spice-infused meat stock. This will result in super tender meat and an incredibly delicious stock that you'll use in the final dish to give it tons of flavour. You need one and a half kilograms of bone and meat that has a little fat. I'm using lamb shoulder chunks, but any other cut of lamb or beef will work as well. Grab a large stock pot and add in two tablespoons of vegetable oil, then turn the heat to high. You're going to sear the meat which will develop some nice browning that intensifies the flavour of the stock. So once the oil has heated, add a few pieces and let them fry for a few minutes. After about three minutes, the pieces should be golden on the first side. Flip them over to the second side and continue searing them until golden on that side as well. Then you just pull them out and set them aside while you carry on searing the rest. Strictly speaking, searing the meat is totally optional. And since it creates a ton of mess and smoke, I get why you'd want to skip this, but I think it's worth the mess and smoke for how much extra flavor it creates. Just give the worktop a quick clean, then you're right back to cooking. After searing the meat, there will be a load of browning and quite a bit of fat in the pot. Pour most of the fat out except for about two tablespoons, then put the pot back on the stove over medium heat. Now to build an aromatic base that will infuse the stock with flavor. Roughly chop three medium onions and add them to the pot, then saute those in the oil for two to three minutes. They should dissolve a bit of the browning and once the onions are a little seared, it's time to toast the spices. Add two teaspoons of black peppercorns, 15 cardamom pods, four bay leaves, a small stick of cinnamon, and four cloves of garlic. Toast those in the oil for 90 seconds to awaken their flavors. When they smell aromatic, pour in a little water and thoroughly deglaze the pot to dissolve all the browning. Now you can add the seared meat back to the pot as well as any juices that drained out. Then pour in three liters of water so that the meat is completely submerged. Add two tablespoons of salt, then turn the heat to high and let the pot come up to a boil. As it's heating, it's going to develop a load of scum, so grab a small strainer or ladle and use that to get rid of it. You want to be careful not to scoop out the spices, and once the broth is mostly clear, it's ready to start simmering. Turn the heat to medium to keep the pot at a light simmer, then cover it with the lid set ajar and set a timer for one and a half hours. While the meat is simmering, you should make the fried aubergines that give the dish its unique flavor and texture. The more aubergines you use, the better the makluba, so grab between one and a half to two kilograms. These need to be cut into slices before frying, and there's two different shapes you'll cut. I recommend cutting one aubergine into long slices along its length that are about half a centimeter thick. These decorative slices can be laid along the walls of the pot to create a nice pattern. The second way to cut these is into rounds that are one and a half to two centimeters thick. These have a nice meaty texture when fried, so cut the rest of the aubergines like this. Once everything is sliced, it's time to salt the aubergines to remove any bitter flavors and draw out the excess liquid. Most aubergines aren't that bitter, so this step isn't strictly necessary, but it also helps the aubergines cook quicker. Lay the aubergines out on a work surface or in a bowl, and then sprinkle over a really good amount of salt, something like two tablespoons. You then rub them together to salt the second side and then stack them up. Place a strainer in a large bowl, then add the salted aubergine slices. And once they're in there, let them sit for at least half an hour for the salt to do its magic. Come back to the aubergines a while later and they'll have wilted a little. The bowl will contain some brown water which the salt has drawn out. Now you need to wash the aubergines to get rid of the excess salt. Do this under your tap or in a bowl, but the important thing is you rub the surface of the aubergines well or they'll be too salty. Trust me, you'll be able to taste the salt if you haven't. After washing them, give the aubergines a brief squeeze to get rid of any surface water, then lay them on some paper towels to dry off. Over to the stove, place a frying pan on high heat and pour in about two centimeters of frying oil. While it's heating, line a tray with some paper towels. Then when the oil is heated, it's time to cook the aubergines. Add a few pieces at a time and cook them on the first side until it is browned. The thin slices take about two minutes, whereas the thicker round slices need around three minutes. 
flip them over, then continue cooking them for another few minutes until golden on the second side as well. Then you just pull them out and drain them on the paper towels. Now for the age old question, can you bake these? Technically you can, but they won't brown as well and the texture won't be as soft. Frying them will give you a better makluba every time. So the aubergines are fried, the meat is almost done cooking, the only thing left is to prep the rice. Take 600 grams or 3 cups of Sela Basmati rice and give it a very good wash to remove as much starch as you can. Sela Basmati is a variety that is both longer and sturdier than regular Basmati, making it the perfect type of rice to use in layered rice dishes. If you can't get it, just use regular Basmati, though there's no promises that your makluba won't fall apart when flipped. Once the rice has been washed about 3-4 to four times and the water is no longer turning cloudy, drain out the water one more time. Refill the bowl with clean water and leave the rice to soak for at least 30 minutes or until you're ready to assemble. Right about now, the stock of meat should be ready. You'll know the meat is perfect when it's super tender and you can easily poke a fork through it with no resistance. That means it's time to pull out the soft meat and set it aside. You also want to pull out and discard the aromatics because the next step is to strain and harvest the stock. Place a strainer over a jug and pour through the stock to remove all the little pieces. You'll be left with this beautiful and extremely flavorful golden lamb stock that we'll use to cook the rice, giving the dish tons of extra flavor. You'll only need about a liter though, so you can strain any remaining stock into a container and stick it in your freezer for some time later. I also highly recommend you pour yourself a glass and give it a try. As for the meat, pull out any bones so they don't get in the way of eating. Now that everything is cooked, it's time to give the rice its signature warming flavors, then we can assemble. Strain the rice and add it to a bowl, then add two and a half teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of baharat or seven spice, one teaspoon of ground cardamom, three quarters of a teaspoon of black pepper, three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon, and half a teaspoon of ground cloves. Add one tablespoon of vegetable oil, you can use the oil from the aubergines for extra flavor, then mix it all together until every grain of rice is coated in spice. Now comes the fun part. Grab a pot that is large enough to assemble the makluba in. Pots with shorter height and a wider size are better at creating a makluba that stays together when flipped over, since there's less height for the makluba to fall versus a tall pot. But keep in mind you do need a pot slightly larger than ours to assemble the full quantity. Preferably you want a non-stick pot so your makluba doesn't get stuck when you flip it, but if yours isn't non-stick, we have the solution. Start off by cutting a sheet of baking paper into a cartouche. Fold the sheet in half, then in quarters, then keep folding it into progressively smaller triangles. When it's pretty tightly folded, align it with the base of your pot, then cut it so it slightly overhangs the edge. Now when you unfold it, you should have a circle of baking paper that's the perfect size for your pot. Flip the pot over and add it in, and now you can assemble. The basic idea when assembling is to create layers of different components, and so you can do it in any manner. Having said that, here's what I do. Start off by building a layer of aubergine so that when it's flipped, that's the first thing you see. Lay the aubergine so they overlap each other slightly to create a ring of aubergine that goes all the way around the pot. After that, you can fill in the center with more aubergine circles, and for a contrasting color, you can use some slices of tomato as well. You can then lay the thin strips around the walls of the pot or space them out like I have to create a decorative pattern. There's no need to use all your aubergines here, so once you have a single layer, start adding in some rice to act as a binder and hold everything together. Spread it out evenly, then add in the pieces of meat in a single layer on top. Next, you'll add even more rice to fill in the gaps around the meat, and once you've covered it, you can then add another layer of aubergine. You'd then cover that with more rice, but because our pot is small and we need a good thumbnail to get views, I'm not going to do that, and instead I'll add the rest of the rice. Level it out nicely, and that's all there is to it. Now to get this masterpiece cooking on the stove. Place the pot over high heat, then start pouring in the delicious stock you made earlier. I'm doing this over the back of a spatula so it doesn't disturb the rice. Pour in enough liquid so that it reaches the same level as the rice and it looks like this. Now cover the pot and bring it up to a boil. When it reaches a violent boil, set a timer for 10 minutes and cover the pot again. Once the 10 minutes are up, the water should have practically dropped below the rice. Now turn the heat to low and let it cook for 30 minutes. That will give the rice plenty of time to steam, during which you can make an essential side for makluba, a quick cucumber yogurt salad. Take one Persian cucumber and grate it on the large side of a grater, then add about 200 grams of Greek yogurt, the juice of half a lemon and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Pour in a couple tablespoons of water and then mix it together until you reach this wonderful creamy consistency. 
This salad dip hybrid is so flavorful. And even if you don't make this, you have to serve some sort of yogurt alongside makloba for the full experience. I just got this stunning Palestinian bowl made by artisans in Al Khalil, so it's only fitting that we use it for the salad. Once the 30 minutes of steaming are up, your makloba is finally cooked and the rice should be super fluffy. You can flip the pot and dig in right away, but if you want yours to stay upright, let it rest for 20 to 30 minutes before you flip. Place a large plate on top of the pot, then in one smooth motion, flip the two together. Three, two, one. Whoa. <laughs> Give it another five to 15 minutes, and then it's time to pull off the pot and go for the big reveal. Ooh. If you're lucky, yours will stay upright. And if the cartouche works, it should all come out. But sometimes you might need to put things back in place. Don't worry if yours collapses though, that happens 95% of the time. We just need a pretty thumbnail, hence the Frankenstein. Garnish with some fried nuts and parsley leaves, and this stunner is ready to serve. It's one of my all time favorite meals. Can't wait to try it out. Mm. Wow, that rice is perfectly spiced. The meat is just so tender, and those aubergines, they give the whole dish a rich earthiness. There's a reason why this is such a popular dish, so give it a try, you won't regret it, and I promise you'll love it.